I believe the truth of this is simply, very basically, what E.F. Schumacher said is that it's called adequatio. That the world is infinitely large, possesses infinite capacity to amaze, inform, inspire us. But we are only as large as our capacity to view it. And our world is only that large in itself. So as we grow more adequate, more evolved, more capable, the more the world seems to grow in scope. But really, it's only us. So what people like Apple and Microsoft are being tasked with is to allow their imagination to lead them beyond the know, and that's not possible. Follow their imagination inextricably in the direction of its wonder until they find themselves having gone beyond everyone else's limitations and are working magic. Does that make sense? I think in times of change, the adventure at hand is to go beyond that which has worked so far because we must and begin to imagine what might be possible and despite the fingers of the naysayers, the nabobs of nattering naysaying pointing at us, insist on living that dream until they look at us and say, wow, that's pretty cool. How'd you do that? And you say, there's no such thing as magic. It's all right here. But what I found was I interviewed people who are living this kind of life. I interviewed the most creative folks I get my hands on. A Nobel Prize winner, two-time Nobel Prize winner, Linus Pauling, uh, just before he died, the last interview we gave. I interviewed um, people that work at Hollywood doing special effects, people that work magic on a regular basis. And I asked them what was the secret of them working the magic that gave them such success. And when I distilled down all the stories, they all had one very similar thing to say. Somewhere in there they gave this response. They said, I insist on living an interesting life. Interesting was the word. I ask you this, do you insist on living an interesting life? This isn't like taking your vitamins. This is doing the thing that Joseph Campbell said, follow your bliss. Or my mom used to say, follow your blints, because we were Jewish, but it's the same idea. <laughs> do you follow your blints, whatever it might be? Do you insist on being with people that you find scintillating, having conversations that are fascinating? Because if you do, your life will get interesting, and the magic just happens by itself. If you're interested in these ideas, feel free to... And Joe Campbell was asked toward the end of his life about man's search for meaning, and he said this great thing. He said, man really isn't searching for meaning. He thought it was, but he said, no. Man, meaning human beings, that's how they spoke back then, really is searching for optimal aliveness. When you leap before you look, when you take action, when you take risks, when you follow a hunch and intuition, and don't wait for the pie charts to be drawn, when you take a chance, Life comes rushing towards you in a Panavision Omni 3D way that you can never regret. And by definition, no matter what the outcome, you are successful because you have become more alive. To create the change we wish to see in the world, it's really very simple. All we really have to do is insist on being the change we wish to see in the world. You guys have amazing work. Uh, what you do inspires, impresses me. Let me say this, never forget that what you do is the most important work in the world. That what really matters finally is not what we do, but how we treat each other. And that people on mountaintops really don't change the world. It's those of us, those of you in this room, living your life with a passion and fire and purpose of adventure and caring that will make this world the place it really needs to be. So thanks for letting me be this very special speaker on this very special occasion. And namaste. Thank you so much. Thank you.